Dell has made one of the most attractive laptops they've made in years. This particular review is going to cover all the strengths and weaknesses of the laptop. So the first thing you'll notice is the metal design. It's flanked on the top and on the bottom. Here we see the uh, back bottom grille and the air vents on the very bottom left. What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about the Dell XPS 13 inch. I'm going to tell you whether this device is worth it and uh, we'll talk about its strengths and some of its weaknesses and uh, yeah, it's going to be a pretty awesome review. So let's take a look. The Dell logo is still the same, but in this particular laptop, it actually makes it look pretty good. They did a fine job putting metal on this thing. They finally learned from the MacBooks that uh, metal just works. Dell has finally figured out the winning formula. In this particular laptop, they use metal on both sides, the very top and the back bottom areas. They have a carbon fiber finish. Uh, a really nice setup with LEDs. It's a really quiet laptop, fairly powerful for its, uh, for its size, and it has a pretty amazing 13 inch screen, uh, an 11 inch body which you just can't find anywhere else. Where else are you gonna find a laptop that's this metallic that has tons of great features? Uh, the model I have right here, this is the base model. It's got the four gig RAM, the i5 processor, uh, and again, the 13 inch screen. So what makes a Dell XPS a good laptop? Well, there's one thing that it has that pretty much no other laptops have, and that's the really small bezel screen. So what happens is when you turn this laptop on, um, it has the form factor of an 11 inch computer and essentially what is a 13 inch screen, which is really, really impressive if you think about it, because something like this has never been done. Uh, Dell also decided to flank uh, basically two slabs of metal on the top here uh, and on the back as well. And it just, it looks really, really the nice. Metal design is a constant reminder that people love quality in their laptops. You're not gonna find that many laptops that have metal bodies, but what you will realize is that more and more manufacturers are going towards metal-based casings around their laptops or full-blown metal casings uh, like the MacBooks or the MacBook Pros that have that unibody design, which is really sweet. If I show you the 11-inch MacBook Air in comparison, they're both the same size, except this has a 13-inch screen. Two Ultrabooks that are really similar. Uh, as you can see, both are about the same size. One has a 13-inch screen, the other has the 11-inch uh, screen. So again, you can put the MacBook Air into this computer, and yet this one still has the bigger screen. So that is a really, really big deal, uh, because you're just not gonna find that kind of screen setup anywhere else. So keep that in mind. I still have a lot of trouble opening up this laptop with one hand. Uh, I really wish they would have designed it a little bit heavier on the bottom with the hinge to be a little bit lighter. So it's just easier to open up. Uh, there you can see the anti-glare screen, which I absolutely love. Uh, while using this thing outside, it, the glare is virtually non-existent um, and it just doesn't reflect a lot. Uh, the keyboard here is actually a very impressive keyboard. Uh, the keys give you a lot of good tactile feedback. Um, there is a little bit of mushiness on the edges, just a little bit, but it's still better than uh, I would say 95% of keyboards out there. Uh, if you're taking a look at it, you'll see that uh, it just they did such a good job utilizing all the space. There's really no wasted space. Uh, you just have your button there at the top right to power it on, and then you have your keys, your F keys, um, and it is a chick light uh, style keys, which means you know they're they're square and they kind of they go down. There's a type of snap to them that you, that you have when you're pressing. Uh, I think it's a pretty decent keyboard. I I did enjoy it quite a lot. notification light that you can see right over here. Dell absolutely loves to use little LEDs all over the place. There's one on the power button, we have one on the charger, and then when you plug it in at the front base of the actual uh, laptop, there's an another LED that turns on. Here you see the camera, and then you have the carbon fiber finish on the edge there. It just looks amazing. They did a really good job with that. 
as you're going up, you'll see that the bezel is really, really thin. Um, and again, this is the biggest selling point for the Dell XPS is that the screen size, it just, it's ginormous. For an 11 inch body, it has a 13 inch screen, which is just amazing. So the overall design has carbon fiber, metal, and basically plastic. But when you bring those together, you get a really sharp look. It looks great. It has a carbon fiber uh, finish. Sort of see it on camera here. And there's a type of rubberized uh, plastic here that's really nice. So when you're typing, you can actually, it feels like you have some really nice support. area to lock your laptop. Got a USB 3.0, the standard SD slot. A lot of manufacturers are going away from the wedged design. Dell chose to keep the wedge design. Um, I think it's not a bad design. However, when you put things on top of your laptop, they tend to get misaligned and they might fall off or roll off. Uh, so the wedge design is kind of, kind of interesting that we still see that in, in Dell's uh, design choices. It does give the illusion of a thinner laptop though, which is nice. The Dell XPS actually has more ports than most 11 inch laptops. That I really do enjoy. My MacBook Air 11 inch does not have this many ports. We got a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Uh, a USB 3.0, a mini display port, uh, and then and the battery charging connector. Here you see a lot of different things you won't normally see on laptops. Uh, you got a battery notification LED that shows how much battery you have. That's something I actually really appreciate. Uh, I think more uh, manufacturers should put that there because you don't always want to turn your laptop on to check. Speakers are also facing from the sides, so they can sometimes get muffled. It has really, really good quality. Um, one of the most impressive things about this laptop that I noticed is that it is really quiet. Uh, the kind of fan layout they use here when you're doing work, um, it just stays quiet. And you can't really hear it, even when it's on max load, it's really quiet. In fact, it's almost twice as quiet as the MacBooks, which is kind of interesting. Every day people ask me, what can you do with these laptops? Can you play games? Can you get work done? What kind of applications can this run? Uh, you know, should they upgrade to the i7 or should they get the, you know, the 8 gig RAM? Questions like that. What I can tell you is that um, the base model for pretty much any laptop you get is usually the best deal. The thing you want to upgrade is going to be the RAM. If there's a 4 gigabyte RAM in here, uh, that's really kind of treading the ceiling of what most computers can do. Uh, so if you're going to be installing apps on there and you're going to be running lots of programs, uh, four gigabytes is, is, is just enough to get you by. So if you want your computer to last you a little bit longer, I highly recommend to get the eight gigabyte configuration because if you do, that will future-proof your laptop. Uh, the other thing I recommend to upgrade second is going to be the SSD storage. So the 128 gigabyte SSD on here, uh, you know, that really is just, it's not enough. You have to get more storage. Uh, with one, I mean, I just bought a 128 gigabyte SD card. Uh, so to have that uh, as like the main storage on this computer, just 128 gigs is just it really, is just not enough. Um, but whatever you can afford is usually the best bet. If you want to get the base model, just get it and don't worry too much about it. Um, what I can tell you is, uh, you definitely can play games on this laptop. Um, I've actually tested, I think, about 25 games now. It pretty much runs all the modern titles. It's not going to be perfect, you know, it's not going to be the fastest computer out there. Um, uh, and you have to be realistic because this is an Ultrabook. So Ultrabooks are defined as basically thin laptops uh, that have, you know, slightly weaker processors. Uh, they're just designed for portability, so you can just grab it and go. Um, I am a huge fan of Ultrabooks and I pretty much started this channel because of Ultrabook laptops that I really liked. I just started talking about them and made videos about them. So who is this laptop for? I'd say this laptop is for anybody who's in an educational or business setting that needs a thin, portable laptop that's 
Powerful enough to do a little bit of light gaming on the side, but also powerful enough to run applications like Adobe Photoshop, video editing applications, and a lot of the basics like Excel and Word. I mean, this laptop is going to do just about everything you need it to do for most people. Um, you can even do music production with this particular laptop. Uh, I want to show you guys uh, eight games that this laptop can run uh, because I've been a proponent of Ultrabook gaming for a while now, uh, almost a year, and I've been telling people, you know, you can game on your Ultrabooks and they, they just had no clue that it was even possible. So we're going to take a look at Battlefield 4, Fallout 4, we're going to look at uh, League of Legends, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, and uh, Rust as well as Ark Survival, and we're going to see how well it runs uh, on this uh, laptop. So let's take a look that uh, the game actually is playable. It runs really well on medium graphics, 1280 by 800, so I'm really happy to report on that. Um, overall, the game runs pretty good. There's a couple hiccups you might run into while you're playing um, here and there, but that's totally normal. And for this being the HD 5500, one of the lower end graphics, this actually performs pretty good by 800, as that's gonna be the best resolution you can be able to play the game at. Everything's pretty much on medium. As it's actually running exceptionally well. Here I'm trying to kill a guy in a tank. I missed some of my shots, so didn't really land him, unfortunately. Um, here is me driving around in a tank. I actually thought that tank performance was fairly smooth. Usually it stays around 30. Um, we're driving around a destroyed rubble city. It's like 25 to 30-ish. And then if you're in a really intense moment, sometimes it falls down to 20. Then what I do is I rendezvous with a bunch of other tanks that were uh, helping me out. But that's what I did after I ended up killing this guy here. So as you can see, even with 22 frames, you know, I turned my tank around. I got hit in many different areas. When you're in a jet, surprisingly, you get an additional 10 FPS. You'd figure if you saw so much that it would be getting rendered all, but apparently uh, jet performance was actually the smoothest in the whole game. So. Uh, and then I find a bridge over there and I was like, oh cool, this is really neat. I should go uh, take a look, see what's going on here. Anyway, it's like a one-way bridge. Whoever built it, there's like no way to get on top of that bridge. It beats me whoever built that thing. Um, but yeah, as you can see, freezing up some more. Not very good. Um, and so then I find a fortress that I start heading over to. And that's when I get the 10, 10 to 15 FPS. Which is just terrible. So this game, you're not going to be able to enjoy it on the Dell XPS. At least not. Um, a few things that I can tell you: the game takes a really, really long time to load. Um, when you're playing on HD 5000 or HD 6000, the game runs decent, but on the Dell XPS, it runs on the HD 5500, which, for whatever reason, it does not run very good. Um, I would say that it's probably not playable, just because I'm getting, I think, about 15 FPS or less. Hey, hit me on the Looks like it's working pretty darn good. If you guys want me to test this a particular game, leave a comment down below. But the thing is, this is integrated graphics, so you have to be realistic with yourself. Um, you're not going to have the best, you know, graphical experience. Um, but I want to thank you guys for watching this particular video. By no means is it, it's not perfect. It's it's one of my more uh, newer videos that I've done, so I haven't done that many reviews on laptops. Um, I would like some feedback on how I can improve this particular video. Uh, so if you have any insight or if I got something wrong, just let me know in the bottom section here. And uh, I uh, really hope that uh, you'll subscribe because uh, I'm making these videos for you. So if you have any idea on how I can make them better, because uh, I, I like to keep a two-way communication with most of my, my subscribers. So if they ask me a question, I'm bound to get back to you in, in an hour or, or a lot of times instant. 